You are aware of the plot to overthrow Christmas, which has been going on for some time now. In fact, Norman Corwin wrote a play called The Plot to Overthrow Christmas, which has been broadcast on CBS for three years. Tonight, you will hear it again. This presentation is by way of a Christmas gift from CBS to its listeners on the principle that the best presents you can give your friends are the things you want for yourself. We wish you good cheer and ask you to follow the unraveling of The Plot to Overthrow Christmas by Norman Corwin. Did you hear about the plot to overthrow Christmas? Well, gather ye now from Maine to the Isthmus of Panama and listen to the story of the utter inglory of some gory goings-on in hell. Now, it happened in Hades, ladies and gentlemen. It happened down there that the fiends held a meeting. The fiends held a meeting for the purpose of defeating Christmas. With the aid of a fade, a fade on the radio, we'll take you there with a high and a hady ho to hear firsthand the brewing of the plot down in the deepest Stygian grot. Grot is a poetical term for grotto. Whenever you hear my voce sato, or sato voce, whichever you prefer, it's just I taking pains to make quite sure that nobody makes a poetical allusion which might in any way create confusion. And I return you now to the voice you were hearing before I had to do this interfering. As I was saying, in this Stygian grot, the notables of Limbo hatched a plot. And what went on in the sulfurous hole will soon pick up by remote control. Of course, such a pickup is not made quickly. As a matter of fact, it's done rather trickly. You mustn't mind if it sounds erratic. That's merely intraterrestrial static. Don't be surprised if you're deafened by thunder just as we start on our journey under. You'll hear earthquakes and all of the commoner varieties of natural phenomena. And so, below... Via radio to the regions where legions of the damned go. me in the middle of a movement of my favorite concerto. You should look to the improvement of your manners. Sir, if you please, my apologies. I would not have intruded upon your recital if the matter were not so terribly vital. The most important matter in the world is piddling when it comes to be compared with Nero's fiddling. Now, what you say may be very true, but I have been sent here to summon you to a great mass meeting of the tortured souls down in the grot of the flaming coal. A meeting? What for? What's the big idea? Why can't a fellow have some peace down here? Peace? Poor soul can't be found on the premises. This is a region abounding in nemeses. Now you're talking like a travel folder. Tell me, Violet, before I smolder, why are we meeting? Who's on the spot? We're meeting in order to fabricate a plot. A plot against the festival that mortal men... Comforting and gladdening again and again. You see, every year... Never mind the facts. I don't want to hear how mortal man acts. The only information about which I care concerns the mass meeting and who'll be there. His wickedness, Mephisto, will preside. Naturally. And several of the Borgias will be sitting at his side. And down in front, by the sizzling sodium will be many personalities noted for their odium. 
Haman, Caligula, Medusa, and Legree. That's all very nice, but what about me? Oh, you'll be sitting in row A, center, between Ivan the Terrible, the Tormentor, and Cersei. Mercy! Why, they're both deranged. Do you wish me to see if your seat can be changed? Yes, if you will, please. Taste comes first, even though a soul may be eternally cursed. right oh. See you at the meeting, then. Yes. And now, back to my fiddling again. This is I, the Sotto Voce person. It should have been explained that Nero's rehearsing for nothing in particular. It's just that way. While hell's fires burn, he likes to play. Makes it feel a little more at home. It's just an avocation he picked up in Rome. called you here from over 60 seas of boiling pitch and blazing phosphorus to stop what constitutes a loss for us. We've lost prestige, and I greatly deplore that we stand in danger of losing more in the way of confidence and spirit. We are far from our goal. We're nowhere near it. And this is the reason. Though we've done well in carrying forward the work of hell, we've left a very big job unfinished. After all these years, there is undiminished goodwill on earth every late December because of Christmas. Now, please remember that as long as this continues to be, the race of man will not belong to me. I will listen now to any questions you may want to ask, and then suggestions. Mr. Chairman, Mr. Chairman. Brother Heyman has the floor. You say we have done well in our effort to sell evil. I say we have done better. We have carried out the letter of your law. We've done what I think is a pretty good job. And I say as a veteran demon... Sit down there, Heyman. Enough of this folly. Sit down yourself. You're off your trolley. Sit down. For I am Ivan the Terrible. You're telling us why you are unbearable. <laughs> Hello, demons. This is no way to act. Please proceed with a little more tact. I want more decorum in this forum. All personal remarks must cease. Now, Brother Ivan, will you speak your piece? I merely want to say in a casual way that Haman is a radical. He always gets fanatical. Why anybody think to hear him snort that the work of the Nazis should just stop short? Anybody think to hear him talking that Hitler and Hito should stop stalking the ways of the world? Mr. Chairman, Brother Ivan is a demagogue with a brain like a fly and the manners of a hog. Why, he says we... Now that's enough. We will hear from others. Surely there must be among you brothers enough venom and malevolence to crush a mortal man's benevolence, it's come to this. Are we going to let a little holiday like Christmas get the better of us all down here below? No, 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 no. Very well then, sirs, very well, let's go. Let's lay down our plans now to overthrow this Christmas business and all that guff. Of holly and mistletoe and stuff. Brother Caligula may take the floor. Mr. Chairman, I abhor, as a former emperor, anything which curbs our rule. I suggest we start right in manufacturing more sin. Let us give some presents, too. Candy sticks and things to chew. Fruits and nuts and little cakes. Poisonous as rattlesnakes. Bravo! Let our subtlest worker be, uh, bichloride of mercury. Let us wrap in tinsel bright little gifts of dynamite. Oh! Work things so that men will fear 
when 12.25 draws near. <laughs> Soon at this rate, if you please, men will hang from Christmas trees. <laughs> My dear Caligula, permit the chair to say that we think you've got something there. And now, with this fine start, let's hear some more. Uh, yes, Brother Nero, do you want the floor? With all due respect to Caligula's views, I think there's a better method we can use. I've just heard lately men are giving the razz to classical music by making it jazz. They're swinging it bark and what is keener. They're doing the shag to Palestrina. Sure, sure. As a connoisseur of music, of course I love the works of Rimsky-Korsakov. But today I note with a bitter shrug, they've made Scheherazade a jitterbug. <laughs> Much as we admire your clever rhyme, uh, will you get to the point where we're wasting time? I was just about to say, when interrupted, that Christmas can easily be corrupted. If you take and swing all the Christmas carols, I think of the evil. Just barrels and barrels of sacrilege every time you play a pious song in a profane way. Why, once you entice him to swing Noel, then victory belongs to us fiends. Well... <laughs> Mr. Legree. I like to say that it seems to me... And you all's barking up a coonless tree. I think Mr. Nero's made a wrong guess. The way to go about it is to get in Congress and bribe a bunch of senators who know their oats and just make a purchase of a block of votes. And then they can legislate a situation where they rule old Christmas right out of the nation. They can all get together and pass a law where there ain't going to be no Christmas anymore. I think Legree's suggestion is a beaut. That's very cute and quite astute. To me, uh, it seems a bit impractical because you have to be so uh, tactical. Why? For instance, now, a Senator who'd sell, his vote to our lobbyists might very well sell right out again and become a tool of agencies representing the Yule. By the eternal night. That's right. Mr. Chairman, Mr. Chairman. Yes, Miss Borgia. I say that we should all give pause to think about this uh, Santa Claus. He is the man behind the scenes, the symbol of what Christmas means. If we could uh, rub him out, my friend... Our troubles would be at an end. Just think how it would tickle us to liquidate St. Nicholas. A girl like me could fascinate the guy and uh, then uh, assassinate? Do you think that you could do it, pretty one? Are you sure you wouldn't be by pity one? Sometimes you are an awful tease, my master, Mephistopheles. Ain't I murdered several dozens, poisoned uncles, aunts, and cousins? Don't my work right here in Hades make me first among the uh, ladies? Men of virtue all have cussed me. I am sure that you can trust me. Of that we haven't a particle of a doubt, Miss Borgia. And I'm sure we all have nothing but kind feelings towards you. But many times a woman's spy, alas, adores her victims. Games make poor ambassadors. Do you imply that such defects are found inherent in my sex? I do. Well, listen here, old Ironsides. You're heading for some cyanides. You've crossed a Borgia. And you know the consequences that follow. Come, come, disciples. This is very bad. There's nothing to be gained by getting mad. Suppose we put the matter to a vote. First, the plan of Brother Nero's, viz, to swing the hymns and pious music. All those four will please respond by raising up a paw. Four? And those against? Against! against. Very well. Now, the project of Legree's. Who is there here who totally agrees? I do. Legree votes for himself. And those opposed? Opposed! And now... 
all those who favor Borgia's cause, it uh, being to eliminate uh, Santa Claus. Aye, aye, aye! And those opposed? <laughs> Seems the women have a way with them. At least they've uh, carried the day with them. <laughs> Emotions carried. And now we'll decide which one of us will take Nick for a ride. We'll all draw lots and thus settle the moot point of who will be sent to execute. This is your old friend, Sotto Voce, visiting down where it's eternal noche. Noche is Spanish for night, you know. Merely a reference, just to show that English isn't all I have to go by. Oh, well... I guess I've missed my calling. I should have been a lobbyist. You see, I'm stalling to give them time to finish the voting. Let's see. The weather. Now I'm quoting the Daily Hellion. Continued heat, both overhead and under feet. Fresh and moderate gases blowing up to gale force and then going north by westerly. Light showers of brimstone toward the evening hours. That's what it says here. I'm not fibbing. How am I doing with my ad living? This is a thing a gabbard have fun with. Say, the drawing should soon be done with. We expect the results at any moment now. As soon as... The lots have been drawn, and I'm glad to say, the honor has fallen Nero's way. You are charged with a great task. It's the evilest deed that we could ask a fiend to do. We'll be proud of you. Now, just one moment. How do I get there? Uh, what do I wear? Uh, is it dry or wet there? Is it fact or fancy or just word of mouth that he lives at the pole? Is it north or south? If he dwells in the regions to which I've referred, must I pass through a camp of Admiral Byrd? What shall I use when it comes to the showdown? A gun or a dagger? Well, give me the lowdown. Now, Nero, you needn't sound so tragic. You'll get to Earth by the blackest magic. To create an express elevator is simple for an expert spell creator. With a lot of pyrotechnic dazzle, we'll let you off on a hill in Basel, Switzerland. From there, you will make your way to the Arctic Circle, then break your way through ice with a blowtorch. After a while, you are bound to reach Santa's domicile. And once you get there, oh, my dear Nero, all of our work will have gone for zero. If you don't succeed in your assignment, a disadvantage of our confinement, in limbo is the fact that we only get one chance in all the eternal roulette of circumstance... I know. If at first we don't succeed, we can try, try again. But there is no need, because nothing will come of it. Meaning no offense. Do you mind if I take my departure hence? That, my friends, was a big brass gong. It's used in this story right along to indicate that we're about to travel to points where the plot will further unravel. And now, if Ambassador Nero elects, We'll have another spot of sound effects. Tell me, stranger. Basel, Switzerland, or is it already Donner and Blitzenland? Donner und Blitzenland's 5,000 miles away. Thank you, mister. Good day. Tell me, stranger, I've been walking inland for weeks. Where am I now? In Finland. Tell me, stranger, because I've lost stock. Where am I now? In Vladivostok. 
This is stranger after all these centuries of blistering heat. Now I have to suffer from freezing feet. I'm wincing with pain from this pesky toe. No speak English. Eskimo. I declare by my frenetic soul, I must be over the magnetic pole. My watch has stopped. Can that be right? I wonder... Ah, a light. A light. In a moment now, you'll hear me knock on Santa's door and he'll unlock it never more to lock again. <laughs> Coming. So is doom. <laughs> How do you do, sir? Very well indeed, and you, sir? Splendidly. Won't you come right in? Take your coat off. I see your chin is frozen. Also your hands and knees. Sit down while I get you some antifreeze. Don't bother, sir. I will not be long. I'm about to perpetrate a fearful wrong. In short, I am going to do away with... Take it easy. Do not play with that gun. I know all about you. Really? Haven't I had my agents scout you for weeks? You've come all this way to abolish Christmas. Now, let me say... Listen, Santa, I'm no callow stripling. I've read Ernest Hemingway and Kipling and also the shooting of Dan McGrew. And plenty of detective stories, too. And just to show you what a broad guy I am, I've also read... The ruby at of Omer Khayyam. Do you think that a fellow with his reading so graded could have learned so little as to be dissuaded from a main objective? Why, don't make me giggle. I'd feel a lot better if you wouldn't wiggle that gun so. Much as I'm impressed with your education, I honestly believe that a figure of your station should have given more thought to the ways of man and less devotion to the cult of Pan. By others, no doubt your wisdom may be prized. But I didn't come here to be criticized. In fact, I came to dispatch a duty. So don't hand me any of this tutti-frutti. If you have any last words you want to say, then spill them. I haven't got all day. Now, what's the rush? Unless I've counted wrong, the polar day has always been six months long. Well, after I've disposed of you, I've got to hurry. Right back to hell, they'll begin to worry. Not about you, but about your career in homicide. Do you think that the mere loss of you would make them hysterical? Their only interest is numerical. Think so? Mephisto wants to rule just as much of humanity as possible for reasons of personal vanity. By the sticks, you're right. Just think that he'd dare... Are there any ladies here? Will you permit me to swear? My answer to that is an emphatic no. There are several lady dolls in the toy room below. Oh, Claudius. Oh, Cassius. Oh, Nathaline. What a fool I've been. What a fool I've been. Yeah, but wait. I think I see what you're after. You're as clever as a big-time Roman grafter. You remind me now of my royalty, just to get me in the mood for disloyalty. Do you think I could be that meanly deceptive to Satan? Why, Santa, I'm keenly perceptive. I can see right through all your clever ruses. Nero can be plenty foxy when he chooses. I'll have you know that I'm partly a dreamer, partly a wit, and partly a schemer. I'm part philosophical and also part mystic. I suppose you fancy that you're highly artistic. Fancy? Why, I have such a sense of beauty. Don't hand me a helping of tutti fruity. Any creature who really had beauty in his soul would appreciate Christmas. He would know that the whole idea of the holiday was one of such power that all the fiends below might gnash their fangs and glower, yet never in a million years could do it harm. Because it has a glory, a greatness, a charm you'd know nothing about. That's so? The spirit that it venerates, the good cheer that it generates, are things far, far beyond you. For all your wealth, no man on earth could sell ye these. Am I so cursed as that? Will you tell me, please, what beauties there may be that I've never seen? 
Have you ever seen a Christmas tree, tall and green, smelling of woodlands, covered with a sheen of silveriness, its branches bending low, with the fruits of human kindness instead of snow? No. Have you ever closely witnessed what takes place any Christmas morning on a young child's face? Or perceived any beauties purer than the joys distilled in the hearts of little girls and boys? Have you ever watched a fire in a fireplace on a Christmas Eve? Or listened to a grace at a table heavy with fruits and cakes and all the wonders that a kitchen makes, fowls and pastries, wines and meats, and nuts and raisins and candied sweets? Uh, have you ever seen mistletoe hanging from a ceiling? In frosty air, heard a far bell pealing. Have you ever come back from a sleigh ride tingling and your feet keeping time with the sleigh bells jingling? Have you ever seen the beauty of a sprig of holly or felt for a moment how it feels to be jolly? Golly! Have you ever known how exceedingly pleasant it is to unwrap a Christmas present? Did you ever know how much cheer it lends to be wished a Merry Christmas by all your friends? Did you ever experience the fun of giving? Do you know at all the joys of living? I guess I don't. For all of me, I never knew such things could be. Just think how long in ignorance I've slept. It must have been the company you kept. I was a wicked tyrant once, you know. Oh, yes, but that was centuries ago. You really had no way of knowing. Perhaps. I guess that I'll be going. I really should be getting on my way. But do you have to? Don't you want to stay? You see, I'm just a bit, uh... Embarrassed? Why, yes, sir. Now, don't look so harassed. I know just why you came and who it was that sent you. But that's all done with. I take it you repent you of all your past mistakes? With many pains and aches of conscience. We interrupt this broadcast for a special bulletin. The Algiers radio recorded by the CBS shortwave listening station has just reported that Admiral Jean Darlon has been assassinated. Said the Algiers announcer, complete order reigns in Algiers. Further details at 8.55 tonight. We return you now to the program... The Plot to Overthrow Christmas. Here. And uh, tell me, uh, will you have some wine or beer? Uh, I never touched the stuff myself, but I uh, managed to keep on hand a little rye for purposes medicinal. I mean, your chin should be unfrozen. What a state it's in. A while ago, you asked me if I understood good cheer. I do so now, St. Nicholas. I see it standing here. I want to ask you something, sir. Now, please don't give a yelp. Is there any sort of work to do where I can be of help? Indeed there is. Indeed there is. And I'm glad you asked me. I have so many toys to make. Uh, this year the job's got past me. But first you sit and eat this bowl. I've got a little trifle I'd like for you to see. So will you sit right here and stifle your curiosity? I'll get it for you right away. It's down the hall. Please. Who'd ever think it? Will wonders never cease? At last, after all these centuries, I'm so happy I could buzz. It shows you what a lot a little Christmas spirit does. As emperor, I envied off the cheerfulness of peasant, and now I... Well, here it is, Nero, my boy. By way of Christmas presents, I offer you this little gift. But, Santa, for what reason? A very good one, sir. To wit, compliments of the season. Well, go ahead and open it. Why stand there so, reflecting? I'm just collecting thoughts, St. Nick, my thoughts. I'm just collecting. Just think how far a tiny bit of fellowship will carry us. Oh, well. I say, what's this? What's this? It is the Stradivarius. Oh, thank you. Thanks a million times. I, I, I don't know what to say to you. I'll tell you what I'll do, St. Nick. I'll start right in and play for you. I'll play, I'll play, I'll play, I'll play. I'll play all night and day for you. Fine, here's some music. I'm sure you'll play it well. It's a little piece entitled Noel, Noel. Speak. 
this is I. Remember me, your solo voce friend? I'll just come back to tell you that the story's at an end. Once again, the plot to overthrow Christmas has been foiled. One year ago today, none of us knew whether on December 24th, 1942, we could do such a broadcast as the Norman Corwin holiday play you have just heard. However, we could and we did. And we rather think that the plot to overthrow Christmas will be thwarted again in 1943.